I think this is gonna be one of those weeks where we're kind of dancing around the weather a bit because at this time of year in Portugal, it can be so changeable. We can have torrential downpours like we've had for the last couple of days. And then the next day you can wake up and it's 15 degrees, glorious sunshine all day, followed by another day <laughs> of torrential rain. So we're trying to make the most of the window of opportunity we have today. Victoria is back down at the house, continuing with the SDS in, raking out all of the concrete that's between the stones doing a cracking job I might add and I need to continue from where I left you last week with those gaps in the overhangs I need to fill in so I want to get those round because by the end of this video I want to get on that final row of tiles and at last complete the roof. It's looking good, but you've missed a couple of pretty big spots. I'm not sorting that mess today. <laughs> I don't even think we've spoken about it, but underneath the windows, it's just a complete state. It's absolutely chock full of concrete and it's missing stones and we don't really know what's going on underneath them. So it is gonna take some exploration and probably a lot of, a lot of work to rectify it, but it's not a job for today. A bit trickier than I thought it was going to be but we got there in the end so you can now see how the front and the back overhang are going to join obviously between the tile at the top and the overhang is going to need filling with mortar and then the render will go over the brick over that mortar up to the edge of the tile so yeah one down three more corners to go Victoria's finished raking out the concrete on the back so I need to pull my finger out and play catch up and get this done end up with so much gravel in my boots by the end of an SDS session so I'm doing my boots up nice and tight today to avoid that not being caught out again some doing but we've finally finished raking out all of that horrible concrete from between the stones at least on the outside and it feels good <laughs> yeah admiring the work yeah it looks so much cleaner although there's still a lot to take off the faces on the top just really makes such a big difference to how it looks but I'm also feeling equal parts excited and daunted about how much pointing there is to do <laughs> Yeah. But once that's done, it's going to completely transform the look of the building. On a side note, we need advice from all of you in dealing with moles because we are currently under attack. They are popping up absolutely everywhere. I mean, to be fair, this does happen every year here. However, it's definitely much worse this year. So we want to try and stop them because 
Well, obviously the first reason is we have big mounds appearing everywhere at the property, which is a bit of a pain. But secondly, we have a little dog who is a hunter at heart and anything like this just encourages her to try and dig it up, to sniff them out and kill them. She already got into here the other day and pulled one out and was running around celebrating with a mole in her mouth. You come the mole killer, murderer. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Sorry, buddy. Good boy. adding about six more in-ground beds to the veg garden and for the ones that are going directly into the ground rather than using the horticulture method which we are using in the raised beds somewhere over there we are going to be doing no dig quite a few of you recommended that I checked out uh, Charles Dowding Charles Dowding <laughs> So I watched quite a few of Charles' videos and he's very knowledgeable and I feel confident now that by following his method we should have some good results. So the first step is to lay down some cardboard which basically is going to block the light to the stuff underneath it so it's going to block the light to any grass and weeds in there and on top of that you then add some compost and other good stuff but first we actually want to create some sort of border just to keep everything in place and where we want it to be. Here comes Dopey with his pickaxe. Dopey, how cheeky of you. Could at least say happy. I think of any others. All the others are bad, aren't they? Grumpy, sleepy. Sleepy. I'm definitely sleepy. Come on. Hi ho, hi ho. Oh yeah. Can I dump all this on top? Or not? No. Oh, what am I doing with it then? I'll get a bucket. <laughs> you need a big bucket. number of these old roof tiles that came off of the original tiny house roof and although they're definitely not going to be going up back on any kind of roof they've definitely had that part of their life done they are going to still be of use to us and we are going to use them to create a border around the in-ground garden beds exact calculation of how many tiles we need but it's definitely going to be several more wheelbarrow loads. <laughs> So the mortar on the overhangs has had plenty of time to go off now so they are feeling super solid really strong which i'm very happy about because i was a little bit nervous when we were fitting them so that now means that we can get them protected from the elements by putting on the final row of tiles or the first row of tiles whichever way you want to look at it on the front and back and then that will keep them nice and dry all the water is going to roll off the front 
eventually into gutters. And I'm really looking forward to getting these tiles on because that is effectively the roof done. I say I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the end result. Actually doing these is gonna be a bit tricky. Probably gonna get my fingers caught a few times because we're not doing this in the right order. The proper way to do this would have been to put on the first row of tiles when we first started the roof. So we put the first row of tiles on and then we'd build up to the ridge from there. But being just two people doing this by ourselves, knowing that we had limited time to do this, you know, we're not working seven days a week on this project. We've ended up doing things a bit back to front because we knew we were gonna be working through winter and we wanted to get as many of the tiles on as possible just to protect that roof. Otherwise, the amount of time it's taken us to do this, all that roof timber would have ended up getting annihilated by all the rain and yeah, all the damp weather we've had. But what it does mean is that we've got our work cut out today because this is obviously our first row of tiles. Well, it's actually gonna be our second row of tiles once we've put this first row on. But obviously these tiles go over the top of the tiles that are below them. So we're gonna have to lift these up like so, and they're pretty heavy to be able to slot the first row underneath. Yeah, this is not gonna be an easy morning of work. What are you doing? Just de-slugging and debugging the underside of these <laughs> half tiles. They've started to be reclaimed by nature. Tiny little slug. <laughs> Tiles are filthy. I hadn't realized quite how much mortar must have run down when we were doing the ridge. Need to go clean. Well volunteered. <laughs> I feel like I might get done for upshorting. <laughs> <laughs> upshorting? Is that even a phrase? <laughs> I can't say upskirting, can I? <laughs> and just like that, we've got ourselves a lovely little overhang. Wasn't too bad fitting that, definitely trapped my fingers a few times along the way, but it's all in. Right now, I'm gonna nip round to the back and get the overhang done there. how this has turned out. I'm really happy with the way it looks. Somehow it looks bigger, it's made the building look bigger. I'm not really sure how it's done that, but it has. So that's a positive. Also, when you look at it from side profile, it kind of looks like it's wearing a little hat, which that's another feature that I quite like. And one thing that I'm definitely happy about is that we're no longer gonna get comments from people saying the roof's too small, you forgot about the overhangs. It's there for everyone to see. So it's turned out pretty much exactly how we wanted it to, except for the brick overhangs being a bit shorter, but other than that, it's a big old success. So I'm just figuring out which way I want the tiles to be going around the edge here on the border. They don't exactly link up because if they were on a roof, they'd be staggered a bit like, a bit like that, if you can see. But the way that they're gonna go on here is that they're gonna be on the same line. So either way, they're not gonna link up perfectly, but I think I'm gonna have the lichen side facing into the bed and then the slightly cleaner side facing out. And that way there's also slightly fewer gaps on the inside, which I think will be a good thing. It 
took a little bit of jiggling to get them to sit straight and interlock but that is one bed down and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Very rustic but I think that's to be expected when you're using really old tiles. But the main thing is that I'm pleased about is I have confidence that it is going to keep the compost where it needs to be and hopefully retain a bit of the moisture as well. a couple more in-ground beds but I'm going to make a couple of little tweaks so they're still going to have tiles going around the outside because I really like the look of it I think aesthetically it looks nice the orange against the green grass but also it is going to keep the soil where it needs to be however two changes I'm going to make so the first change I'm going to make is how I do the cardboard so you can see here there are slight gaps here because the tiles aren't actually running completely straight so that's still leaving that side edge a little bit vulnerable for grass and also weeds growing through so I'm going to put the cardboard down prior to doing the tiles. The tiles I'm going to use are also going to be a little bit different so these still came off of the tiny house when we took the original roof off but they went on the edge of the roof so it sort of overlaps slightly on the side of the walls so they're a totally different shape but what it means is that I shouldn't actually need to dig down to bury half of the tile so I'm going to experiment we'll see what happens but the idea is basically that the tile is going to trap down the cardboard and then because it's like an arch shape that should provide some space and some depth for the compost to be contained within. These ones were significantly easier and quicker to make, so thumbs up from me. to add in a lot more compost into these beds but for now there is a, a few centimetres on there so that when I water it it's going to soak through into the cardboard so it can get really saturated and start and break down. I just did a little whoop off camera because I've just spotted our potatoes are starting to poke through the ground and not just one plant we've got at least a dozen plants that have poked through so yeah I've got a good feeling about this new spot well today is a good day because the work I have to do is the last thing I'm gonna have to do on the roof for a very long time. Hopefully it's only gonna take me a few hours, but I need to fill in the gaps between the top of the tiles and the brick overhang, bring it level with the face of the bricks, and then it'll all be ready to be rendered at some point in the future. <laughs> but that'll be a little while because we need to point everything and do a load of other jobs first. But before I can get plugging it with mortar, I need to nibble off uh, a few of the tile battens because they're slightly overhanging on the end of the brick and they're in the way. So get them nibbled and then fill the gap.
There we go, so that's one side all filled in. The gaps are actually quite big, so I've ended up putting kind of lime mortar in, stuffing it with broken bits of tile, broken bits of stone to give some more strength and reinforce it, and then, yeah, adding more mortar in on top of that. Definitely a little bit tricky where the tiles overlap each other because it's a tiny gap that you just have to delicately point in, but it's really brought all of it together nicely and we've just had a look at it together and just commented that once that's all rendered it's really going to unite it even more but hopefully now it's gone off enough that i can get i don't know where i've put it down but I get a nail thank you <laughs> so yeah now me and my trusty nail are just going to rough it up and create a scratch coat ready from the future when we want to render onto it There we go, roof is done. This is quite a monumental day to be honest. We've been working on this a long time, obviously on and off. We haven't been working on this for this long, seven days a week, but still it's been a long slog and yeah, I'm happy we're here. Really happy with how it's turned out. And it means next week I can start a new job on something completely different. How exciting. <laughs> <laughs>